The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good day, everyone. My name is Kevin Arndt, and on behalf of all of us at Topia, thanks for joining us today. Our webinar today is entitled Streamlining Payroll for Mobility Employees with Topia Pay. This is a part of our Topia Passport series. Before we begin, a few notes. Phones have been muted to minimize the background noise, but we do encourage your questions. So please type them in the question tab in the GoToMeeting console, and we'll address them at the end of the presentation. We also have a handout for download. So if you see the uh, handout in the GoToMeeting console, you can tap that and you can uh, download a handout about today's topic. We're also recording this webinar. A link will be sent out to everyone who registered on Monday. We encourage you to share it with your colleagues. With that, let me introduce today's speaker, Rebecca Applewhite. Rebecca is a senior solutions consultant at Topia. Prior to Topia, Rebecca spent over 10 years in the industry, including time with Deloitte in both the UK and Australia. And with that, I turn it over to you, Rebecca. Thanks, Kevin, and good morning, everyone. So today, what we're going to be looking at is some of the key challenges we faced when we're operating a global mobility payroll. I'm then going to walk you through the Topia Pay solution. And finally, I'm going to dig right into the detail and show you in practice a demonstration of the Topia Pay solution. So we all know that global mobility takes a payroll process, which is already quite complicated and complex, and really makes it even more complicated. So whether that's dealing with different global systems and processes, um, there's all of those concepts that are very specific to global mobility. Things such as paying allowances in different currencies or more complicated concepts such as tax equalization and hypothetical tax calculations and withholdings. We also have the problems that are raised by having to do gross ups or shadow payrolls and so on. So what's unique about the Topia? Well, what Topia does is we are leveraging technology um, as well as a service support offering to provide you with accurate, detailed payroll instructions and compensation reporting, while also simplifying those complexities of processing payroll specifically for mobile employees, wherever they might be. So essentially, we're taking a lot of those complicated processes and automating them, driving efficiency through that technology process. Hopefully, this is bringing a much um, calmer and easier year end. So by actively managing your payroll and your compensation throughout the period, you're getting to year end um, and having a nice, easy um, time of it. We're reducing um, some of those costly processes um, that can occur when payroll is being managed through a consultant. And we're trying to minimize and reduce the N errors through our technology. So, for example, driving much more um, automated data validation. All of this means a lot more certainty and less stress for your employees, reducing the anticipated errors and potential time delays in getting the payment reporting. And finally, we're centralizing your payroll instructions and your compensation collection in a single platform, providing you with a single source of truth. So how do we do it? Well, here's a conceptual model of our integrated technology payroll process. The starting point is that we have a platform that holds all of your employee details in one place. And we're able to trigger automated review of those details um, to drive automated warnings uh, on any, any, any potential errors. That enables you to keep your data integrity intact. The next step is um, creating a preview of the payroll report. And here's where your teams or ours can identify issues, outliers, anything that might need a reconciliation or further investigation. Once the payroll preview has been approved, um, then it's next time to uh, generate the payroll instructions. And in between that step, we may have gone back to update the employee's balance sheets with any changes that were identified during the preview. Once the payroll instructions are approved, we can send those to your global or local payroll providers. 
either via a flat file in a format that your local payroll provider needs or via a direct integration. And the final point is that we're uploading actual payments made back into the platform and reconciling actual payments with what was instructed immediately when it's fresh in mind. And that means that your comp collection is done throughout the year in a very tight, automated way. So we take that basic payroll structure um, where we have the, the flow I've just mentioned, the data updates, the warning report, the preview, the final payroll instructions and the comp upload. So we take that standard process, but we're able to overlay any of the individual configurations that are important to your specific locations and entities. So very few um, of our customers have a standard global process throughout their entire organization. So when we look at building our payroll processes for our customers, we're looking at your entity specific requirements, such as um, certain types of input and output formats, um, whether there is an ability to integrate directly with the payroll system. Of course, the specific payroll calendars that are appropriate to each location and the contacts that are involved in each payroll. The approval process may vary slightly from location to location. We are also going to map all of your pay codes according to your local payroll specifications as well as the taxability. So we're bringing together our knowledge of standard best practices, but we're able to bend and flex to configure for your um, specific requirements where it's needed. Now we have two potential models um, of delivering global mobility payroll for you. So we take the technology process that I've described previously. So that's the automated workflows, the feed from the dynamic balance sheet, sheet straight to the payroll instructions, the configuration of your calendars, contacts and approval code flows, your global pay code and taxability mapping. We can do US tax gross up calculations and we can configure the import or the export formats for you. Now, if you have an in-house team and the resources to be able to do this, you can use our technology to action those workflow tasks, to audit the data um, and to interact with your local payroll providers. Alternatively, we have the possibility of a fully managed process. So we have an expert in-house payroll team who can manage the process for you, do the reconciliations and the audits and upload the compensation back into our system after the pay run. So this gives you the opportunity to get the right model for your business. But not only that, um, we get the benefit of having an in-house payroll team sitting right next to our technology experts. And that provides us with a great feedback loop. So we're constantly innovating um, on our technology solutions which I think is a key part of our success. I wanted to give you a case study of one of our large technology um, customers based in the US to give you an insight about um, the before and after differences of, of global mobility payroll management with Topia. So before this customer came to us, they were heavily reliant on Big Four for almost all elements of their global mobility payroll. They also had a very high um, year-end adjustment rate. So the W2C is uh, the year-end payment summary in the, in the States, um, where it has been adjusted after the due date. They had a lot of manual effort. So they were manually creating cost projections for every assignment using Excel. And because of that, it was very hard for them to get reporting on their compensation and visibility into, those, into that key data. They had an absolutely horrible year-end process. It was all hands on deck. Of course, it was over Christmas being in the US. Um, nobody really wants to have to go through that every year. And they had a very fragmented payroll system across the globe. So there was no one key that did everything for them. So they partnered with us. And what we were able to do with them is really provide a complete automation of their payroll and compensation workflow. Now they have zero W2Cs, um, and we're really proud of that fact. 
their HR BPs are able to get instant cost projections at the touch of a button. And it means that they've got a very centralized platform where they can obtain real time compensation estimates and spend reporting. They're still, they're still using their big four to help them with their tax specific complexities, but the fees have been reduced because we've taken away some of that manual effort. We're also able to integrate with ADP for them, reducing the amount of Excel in use. And now we're proud to say that that horrible year end has become, in their words, just another month. <clears throat> so why would we why would we like to work with you and why do we think um, we're a really unique solution? So first of all, the fact is that our payroll technology is driven by the same technology as our global mobility management. So all of your data, all of your cost estimates and all of your wider mobility processes are in the same place as your payroll management. It's not fragmented and it's not separated. Secondly, Topia's core focus has always been technology for mobility. It's not a byproduct of, of another solution. We're constantly iterating and building new innovations in our technology product. We have uh, a, a few key integrations across our customers today. We integrate with ADP, Workday, SAP, PeopleSoft, and we have built many other direct feeds into payroll systems across the globe. We link with your tax provider. So we are able to centralize and take all of that compensation data that we're collecting and provide it directly to your tax providers for their annual filing requirements. And finally, by working with Topia, you own your processes and your data in one place. It's all centralized in the Topia platform. That gives you complete real-time visibility into everything that's going on and you can run reports and get insights at any time. Okay, so with that, just give me a moment while I pull up our system to start the demonstration of our technology. Okay, so here I am in the Topia dashboard. So, um, if we remember back to the conceptual overview of the payroll process, the payroll really starts with the balance sheet. The balance sheet is held on every individual's account and the balance sheet is driving live payroll data. So here I've jumped into an assignee um, who has gone from Korea to China, Sue Ri, and here is her live balance sheet. So a few points to note about the balance sheet. It's automated, first of all, depending on the configuration we've done for your policies. So Suri is on a long-term assignment. That means that she gets certain additional assignment allowances such as cost of living, a foreign service premium and a hardship allowance. The configuration runs really deep here. So for example, um, in this particular case, the foreign service premium may only apply to assignments in and out of China. We can build a level of specific, specifics for absolutely each element on a policy, a geography, or an individual level. Secondly, the rate data and the lookup tables behind some of these elements are built into the system. So for example, if we take a look at the cost of living allowance, here we can see that we're using a table from the Department of Defense. We can equally use tables from Mercer and Air Inc and so on. We can use our own lookup data or we can use your um, specific data. Also here, you can see all of the information around this allowance that ensures as much automation as possible throughout the payroll and compensation process. So you can see the pay code we were able to map that pay code to specific geography pay codes. For example, this might translate to pay code A485 in the US, B763 in Brazil, and T004 in Australia. The pay codes um, are also mapped for taxability purposes. So we have our own tax engine built into the platform. 
when, whether the cost of living is taxable in the US or in Australia, we can configure that for you on a default tax basis, or we can take different positions based on your organization's level of risk or specific tax decisions. The more data that's available here, obviously, is the amounts and the currencies, the frequency of the payment, some more information about how the item has been calculated, as well as which payroll entity the amount is linked to, and the dates of start and end. So cost of living is linked just to the payroll start date, but a housing allowance, for example, might be linked to the move into, temp uh, move into permanent housing date. So we're really trying to vi um, drive as much efficiency and automation behind the calculation and the flow of these pay items. So looking um, a little bit further down the balance sheet at hypothetical tax. So we can calculate the hypothetical taxes using our proprietary tax engine. And we have logic for 106 countries and it's growing all the time. But we can also um, configure and drive particular tax positions for either particular areas, policies or individuals. So I've just popped into Sue's profile and I can see the logic behind the tax positions and you can see the large amount of different positions that I can set for this individual. So for example, Sue Ri went from China to Korea, but she might be on a policy that sets an effective hypothetical tax rate back to the US, for example. Here is where I would make those adjustments to drive accurate instructions to payroll based on quite complicated and specific configurations. So the balance sheet is a living, breathing document. It stays with Sue throughout her assignment. You also have a full version history of any changes that are made, and you can make changes and add new items as needed. So for example, if I know that Sue needs a one-off allowance next month in agreement with her, her manager, I can add an item here. Um, I can um, specify all of that data that's driving when and where and in what currency it's going to be paid. Now let's take a look at how the balance sheet actually drives the payroll. So first of all, the way that we set up the payroll process is to start with each entity, each payroll entity. Now, usually the entity is connected to a geographical location. You can see some examples here, but you may have multiple US or multiple Australian payrolls, depending on your organizational requirements. Here's where we set up all of the properties of a particular payroll. So this might be the contacts within a payroll, who's approving what and when, the flow of that approval process, all of the currencies, the dates, the configured positions, whether or not there's a shadow payroll required and so on. Here you can see an example of the Australian payroll calendar with all, with all of the key dates for each payment period up and configured. So now let's have a look at the Australian payroll for the month of March. So, as I said first, the first step in the payroll process is the warnings report. So this is an automated, automated check um, that's looking for any potential errors from the data held within the system. So it's raising a red flag before you get to the payroll instructions. So for example, might be an employee that's assigned to the payroll Australia who has gone past their start date, but has not had a confirmation confirmation or a confirmed start, that's going to raise an error for a checking. Another example might be an employee that has a confirmed start date, but still does not have an employee ID. Obviously, that's going to generate an error across the payroll process. So we're trying to um, preload as many error, um, data validations as possible before you even kick off the payroll. 
So the first step is the payroll preview. So the payroll preview is, is being run from the balance sheet. I'm just going to open that up here. Here's an example. Let's make that a little bigger. Okay, so the goal here is for the team to be able to view each employee to see what they were paid in the prior period, what the data is in, in, in suggesting they're going to be paid in this period, and are there any obvious variations or errors that need to be reconciled before the instructions are run. So looking at Dawn Proctor here, you can see her ID number and her assignment type. You can see the currency of this pay and the pay codes that have been mapped. Obviously, we can see that Dawn um, was paid, for example, she had 5,666 salary in the prior period compared to 10,000 in this period. Now, in this case, the variance can be explained by the fact that Dawn started her assignment partway through the pre previous month. If there is an issue that needs validating, I would be able to pop back into Dawn's balance sheet, update the necessary change, and rerun the preview instructions. Once the preview has been approved, and you can see down here that we might have several different levels of approval depending on your requirements. Um, once it's been approved, the next step is generation of the pay instructions. So here. Now these instructions can be adapted to fit whatever your local or global payroll upload or import templates require. So we could either generate a specific Excel template to match a local payroll's import requirements, or we can build direct integration and have some direct integrations with ADP, for example, so that there's no need to um, upload and download Excel. So here we have all of the instructions that your payroll needs to process the actual payment. Coming back to Dawn Proctor, here we have the pure cash and hypothetical withholdings for Dawn for the month of March. So the instructions sent out to payroll and then eventually it is time to collect the compensation that has actually been paid back into the system. So that data will come back into Topia either through a direct feed where an integration has been set up or again, we can create a compensation collection template based on your local payroll output requirements and the data comes back in that way. So here we have an example of the um, payroll results in a compensation collection template. So the first thing here is one of the benefits of the system is that we can directly match what has been paid with what was instructed. So here you can see five buckets of key variances that might be identified as part of the compensation collection process. We're trying to automate the data auditing that's primarily delivered by people and spreadsheets today. Um, so we have here a variance in the amount of an allowance for Reese Burbank. You can see that he, it relates to his cost of living allowance. He was paid $2,000, but he was instructed to be paid $2,505.83. And we've got a 20% variance there. So the idea is that the reconciliation and any adjustments can be made in real time. So if that is a genuine error, I would then pop back into Reese's balance sheet, add a one-off payment following payroll, and you can see this, this has actually been done in this example. So a note has been made, the auditor, that a balancing cost of living adjustment um, for Reese has been added to the next month's payroll. Now, if you, are required to operate a shadow payroll, that would be the next step in this process. So everything that needs to be shadowed in the other location would be kicked off a month in arrears. So taking all the amounts that were actually paid 
and processing them as a notional item in the other entities payroll for full and complete tax and reporting purposes. And as you might imagine as part of that compensation collection process, we can also bring in non-cash items, whether that might be tax reconciliation payments or housing payments made directly by your relocation provider. We can bring that data into the system and process them in an automated way as notional payments on the following month's payroll. And to close the loop, we can also data feed information to your finance systems and going through the GL allocation process. So as well as mapping all the elements to your specific pay codes and taxability, we will also map your GL numbers, driving as much automation and efficiency throughout the entire payroll process. So that's the process for each payroll. Um, the approval, the steps in the approval and who needs to do what is fully configured to your organisation. Everything is centralised in our platform and you have a full audit of all the steps taken, who did what, when and why, and real-time reporting. So if I ever need to check what was paid for any particular payroll, I can do so. Is my Australian payroll what was instructed, what was paid, and what was collected and I can dive into the detail at any time as well. Another key feature is the ability to drive or help to drive year-end tax collecting processes, working with my tax provider to, pr to produce specific year-end or fi fi fiscal year-end tax reports. So your tax provider can be provided with access to the Topia platform. They can come in and run their own reports. Um, again, trying to save as much time and efficiency as possible and removing your mobility function from that, from that feeling of being piggy in the middle. We're also driving as much consolidation of data between the systems as possible. We're, we're taking out the manual work, taking out the Excel tracking and we're tying the data up nicely um, in, in a neat package with a, with a lovely bow on top. And you have complete overview. Your data's all in one place. It's not sitting in dis different systems or spreadsheets and so on. So there we have um, a demonstration of a typical payroll process as supported by Topia. I might pause there and see, um, Kevin, if we have any questions from the audience. Thanks, Rebecca. Uh, yeah, let me remind everyone, if you do have questions, please type them in the question tab and we'll do our best to get to them. We do have a couple in there already, Rebecca, so let me just jump in here. So um, here's one from Sue. Uh, Sue's saying, hey, how many global payrolls can you support? We have lots of local providers. Um, that's a very good question. Um, we actually don't have a limit on the number of payrolls that we can support and work with. Um, one of our customers has 70, around 70 different payroll um, entities. That's our maximum so far, but we don't see any limitation and uh, we'd love our customers to challenge us with more. All right, I, I, I sense a contest in our future. Okay, uh, here's one from uh, Joanne. Uh, some of our locations run payroll manually with spreadsheets. Can we still do that without fancy integrations? Yes, absolutely. So um, at any point in the interaction between the platform and the payroll provider, we can either build an integration if the payroll provider is able to support that, or we can enable a download of the data, usually in Excel, in a format that's easy for your local payroll to import or export. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, I'm just checking. Uh, yeah, it looks like we have one more question, so let's do this one. Uh, this is from Sandra. Can you impute non-payroll items such as relocation cost into your payroll instructions? Yes, absolutely. So um, any, I guess, expense payments that are made on behalf of the employees by a third party provider, such as a relocation management company, or for example, any um, I think an example I used in the demo actually was a tax reconciliation payment that's been paid on behalf of the assignee. They can be brought into the system 
and tracked into the payroll in a month in arrears essentially. So we can impute those non-cash items into the payroll to make sure you have full compensation reporting and full um, tax management as well. Great, thanks. Uh, that looks like that's it for the questions, Rebecca. I don't know if you have any closing remarks before we let folks back to their day. No, thanks very much for your time. I hope I gave you a good insight into the system and uh, looking forward to answering any questions if you if you have them at a later time. Very happy to answer them. Yeah, let me just uh, conclude by saying if you do have questions, please info at topia.com. We'll be happy to get back to you. And again, there's a handout if you'd like to download. And finally, uh, the link to the recording will go out on Monday. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great day.